I'm Stephen Foskett, the organizer of Tech Field Day, and the video you're about to watch is a Tech Field Day presentation from November of 2016. We have uh, invited a panel of independent writers and speakers from across the internet and around the world to join us here in Silicon Valley to meet with various companies, discuss their products, and learn about their technologies. Uh, right now, you're going to learn about Igneous Systems. Uh, you can find out more about them. Uh, you can find them on Twitter, Igneous.io. You can go to Igneous.io. And if you'd like to learn more about this event, just go to techfieldday.com or view more videos like this at youtube.com slash techfieldday. Hi, I'm Christian Smith. I'm the VP of products here at Igneous. Uh, you know, Jeff talked to you about what it means to be cloud managed. And so I'm gonna actually walk you through that now. Um, you know, doing this demo is gonna be really different because usually when I would do this demo in my past, when I worked at like EMC or Isilon or NetApp, what I would do is walk you through like how easy it is to set up and configure, how easy it is to create raid groups or create you know, uh, volumes and how easy it is to go push an upgrade. Um, this model is completely different and it, actually what you're gonna see is there's actually not a lot to do. What we really focus on is getting in, doing your job as in terms of go provision something. We give you a lot of visibility to see things that are happening but we take care of a lot of the sort of normal tasks you would have to go do in order to keep uh, a storage device in your environment healthy. And so that is the burden that we put on us. And so what I'm gonna show you is you have this data center. Uh, we have that, that initial configuration that the service runs on. So this is that 212 terabytes usable. And we only ever talk about usable here because protection is our problem, <laughs> not your problem. And we have this cloud. And these two things talk to each other. So that appliance is sending you know, telemetry up to the cloud. And there are tasks that are going on there. So you can log in as a user to go do your provisioning. And then we take care of a lot of the other tasks there, like you know, software updates. We do mitigation on it. We do all the monitoring here. And we take over all those type of sort of heavy lifting things. You know, the question we usually get asked is, well, so how does that device in the data center connect up to the cloud? And what we do is we use an outbound uh, 443 HTTPS SSL connection. And so this is an outreach model at all times. So that device in the data center is always reaching out to the cloud. This isn't a managed service where we're, you know, logging into that system and getting on a council and doing a bunch of stuff. This is truly an automated service in terms of what we're doing and doing it in a secure way. Much like when you connect to your bank, you reach out to your bank, your bank doesn't connect into you. So I'm gonna show you uh, the part of this, which is if I'm the user, so I've, I've subscribed to this service, I now have this appliance that's sitting in my data center, and what do I do, what do I see? So the demo I'm gonna be doing is, you know, you're the storage administrator, and what are the things that you wanna go do, and what visibility do you have into this infrastructure? And again, we take care of all those other things for you. So well, let me flip over to the UI. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to a website. This is, this is our control plane, this is the cloud. And I'm gonna log in as a user. And the first thing you're gonna notice is just a quick dashboard. Like, we have a lot of in-house design people, and what they do is they spend a lot of time trying to understand the things that an administrator has to do. Sort of, you know, what is their tasks and activities so they can create a very clean and easy experience to come in. And so one of those things we said is like, what is the thing that you wanna know first and foremost? Hey, is the cloud talking to the appliance? Right, are these things communicating so we have a, a, an effective service here? And this connection, if it severs, this isn't something that it stops the appliance from working in the data center, it stops the service from working, but this is the visibility point here. So, you know, if this, is, if this happens to be something like we saw a customer where their entire network went out, and we called them up and said, hey, we're not seeing the system, and we got the response back, yeah, we know, we just lost entire access to our data center, we're working on it. And so that's the kind of experience we can see when we're monitoring these systems as a fleet, but also bubbling those, those sort of anomalies up uh, when they happen. 
The other stuff is really about just kind of the hero numbers. So, you know, Werner Vogels likes to talk about, you know, we have trillions of objects within S3. And so we just said, hey, it'd be really great if we could brag about some things. So, you know, how many objects do I have stored on the system? Uh, what's their average size? You can get a quick view of the activity that's going on in the system. And then the second thing is, is this, this age-old question of, you know what, um, I got the storage in my data center. How much, is my, how much have I used? How much is available? Uh, just quit it, get a quick glance of like, how fast is this thing filling and, and when do I need to order another you know, chunk of that service? And more often than not, we're gonna be in contact with you, say like, hey, we see your fill rate, it's going this fast. You know, knowing your deployment times, we probably need to look now to deploying something or we need to look in a week or we need to look in a month to adding more to the service. And this is all done non-disruptively. So how, typically, how long does it take to get a new appliance delivered? Uh, a, a week or two. It's not that long. The bottom is all about just getting a sense of the activity. So what's happening on the system from a physical perspective of network in and out? So now you have this is the I.O. kind of coming through the physical interfaces uh, overlaid with, hey, here's the operations of get, put, list, head, delete at an API level. And all of this is, you can scroll through this from time to see what was happening at any given point in time. And then maybe you wanna look at something like and just say, hey, look, I just wanna see what's happening with gets and puts relative to input here. And so you can see how these two things kinda of overlap for a given time period. So fully filterable. Now, if I just left you with this, you'd probably go, hey, that's great, there's, a, there's an overall capacity graph People have done that. What we really wanted to get into is uh, really drive into sort of the usage by container or bucket. And so what kind of things would you wanna see here? Well, maybe I wanna understand what growth rates look like for an application. Maybe I wanna group application buckets together so I kinda see how this application is growing as a whole. Maybe I just wanna inspect what my overall system growth rate is. And so a lot of this is really about, I can go in and say, hey, let me just look at the last seven days and now I get a quick view of, hey, this is where we started seven days ago, this is where it's at now, this is the change in growth rate, and this is how fast it's growing per day. And, and I can grab this and I can pull that in real time. And so this is just highlighting a lot of the metrics that we're collecting are very rich in terms of what we're able to display back. And so everything here is just API driven, and so we've had customers that said, hey, um, can you expose like, what you're using to drive these dashboards? And absolutely, like, this is all API driven first, and then we build sort of the, the UIs up, upon, up, up on that over time. <coughs> and I can, I can pick custom time ranges here, but then I can start to say, hey, you know what? Maybe I wanna look at these three containers together. Maybe these make up my applications of, you know, I got an S3, I got a backup, and I got some genome data there. And now I can see what, how they compare against you know, the total, but I can also individually highlight over them and see what each one of those things are gonna do. So I can say like, well at the beginning, just this one was at 355 and now it's at 38 and it's growing at 4.2 terabytes per day. Um, I can continue to add stuff here. I can say, you know, really instead of a stack comparison, I wanna just do a, a, a comparison against each other. Um, and then maybe you want just a little bit cleaner view and you can say, you know what, I really just wanna see these things by themselves without the rest of the other stuff that I haven't selected yet here. The next part is really about, okay, so we have this control plane in the cloud and we have the service running in your data center. So who's doing what? Like who are the admins and what are they doing? Are they logging in? Are they creating things? And so just from the beginning, we said, you know, we need to create like just this activity log of stuff going on. And the activity log just says, says what's happening on the system. Now, the cool part about this, this isn't just about what people are doing logging in. This is also where we communicate out like, hey, look, we just did a software update. Did you notice? Um, maybe you want to see what's in the software update. And so you can go and you can click on the release notes here. And it just pops up and says, hey, these are the things that we either added new, we improved upon, or yeah, we, have a, we had a bug, we fixed a bug, right? And so you get a quick view of just like, there's not a lot there. This isn't a long release notes process because of what we're deploying is you know, very small incremental changes over time. 
And of course, every time we deploy, we're adding new features and functionality into the system too. Or conversely, we can go and say, hey, I released a major new feature, and, and here's all about a major new feature that we just released. And then the last part is, there was a lot to see we just saw. There, we just did a lot of stuff there. You didn't really have to do anything yet. The last part about is provisioning something. So this is where you go, uh, I, I need to go provision some storage for my application through the data service. And so now you're going to go and you're going to say, hey, look, first and foremost, I want to go create a container. And now you're going to see that asynchronous nature. You notice that it goes into a pending state here. So what's happening is it queues up this command. It says, hey, I want to create a container. And it's waiting for the service to reach up to grab that command, bring it back down to the service, execute it on premise, and reply back and say, hey, I got it. It's done. I just created it. The second part is you want to create access to this. So now I could say, hey, tech field day 12. I'll create the key. Uh, this is just your, your access and authentication to it. So this is sort of standard S3 stuff where you have your ID and your secret key. This is the only time you're going to see it. Uh, so I can go download it here at this point. I'll put it in the CSV. I've got it. I could even go and say, you know what, I just want to copy it into my application directly. So I can copy it. As soon as I hit dismiss, that's it. It's gone. If for any reason this gets compromised, just go create a new key and just you know, reassociate it then. And now I just go and say, OK, now I'm going to associate these two things together, just drag and drop. And again, you see that, that command to say, hey, go tell the on-premise device that I want to associate this key with this container at this point. And if you're ever curious about, hey, what keys belong to what containers, you can just highlight the key, and it'll give you a little wiggle over it. So just a nice little design touch. Or even go the other way, if I want to know, I see like, uh, on the left side there, if you go back, you've got one where there's a three next to the key. You hover yeah. over that one, will it tell me which three keys are associated? Yeah. Yeah, got it. So in your dashboards, can you see which keys are, are doing the most puts and gets and how much, like if I'm trying to figure out who's placing data on my appliance, I can figure that out? Yeah, well, I mean, yes, we've got all that data. Uh, we haven't had a request for it yet. So most of the time it's like, hey, I want to understand what containers are the most active as the starting point. But yes, we've got the, those activity levels that say, hey, if, if you take these as applications or users, yeah, we have the data to go filter that by those things. And if you've got more than one appliance on-prem, that container will be distributed across the appliances? Yeah, it's all one logical system. So this UI, whether I have one of those appliances or I have 100, this just continues to scale across those, uh, those appliances. I don't know if you said it, uh, dedupe and compression or anything like Not that? Not yet. Okay. No. So speaking of getting data on and off the box, yeah. what methods are supported? Uh, so we support S3. <coughs> so anything that's sort of in the S3 ecosystem, we support at this point. Um, and and I, I, I purposely skipped kind of the S3 access because I didn't think it was intriguing enough to sit you know, and do CyberDuck or do and just drop some files on. But anything that sort of fits into that S3 ecosystem, we, we support. I imagine if we're only consuming it based on provision storage anyway, the fact that there might be dedupe or compression underneath, we don't really care about it. Anyway. No. I mean, that was, Sorry, was, that that was just a comment, really. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I, you, I, you I, are I, right. I, I couldn't quite hear. What was the question? No, I was just saying, uh, the fact that uh, you guys may or may not do dedupe or compression doesn't really matter from our perspective. We're consuming it based on per gig that we want to actually consume. Totally, totally. Like, and there's a lot of applications that do it on the source side anyways before they move it over. Um, so you know, most of the data that we've been supporting, so a lot of the use cases that Kieran talked about, that data is not dedupable anyways. Right? You're talking a lot of like research stuff, which is a lot more like image files, or it's, it's already pre-compressed by the time it gets to us. Uh, last thing, uh, just because we want you to work through the product, uh, we have help right here. So this will launch you into a community with KB articles. And um, we do a lot of work with our customers in terms of uh, submitting product ideas. And so a lot of our feedback comes directly from our users. And then, of course, you know, like any good product, if you've got any issues, you can submit to us right through that. And we have monitoring and alerting all set up on that, too. 
So that's a web-based portal that you guys have, that you guys are hosting, correct? Correct. And so when I log into that, are you pulling data in real time from what we have, or is there like a sync uh, that happens at a periodic basis? Um, so we have telemetry and metrics that that system on premise is sending up at all times. Okay. Okay. The command part of that, like the when I go to provision, that is on a periodic basis where it comes up and asks and says, do you have anything you want me to do? And then it comes up and grabs that and pulls that down and executes that command. Yes, yeah, so I'm talking about in terms of uh, you know um, capacity used or anything like that. So is that like you know from the time the moment I log in and I click that button to see how much is how much capacity I've used? Am I seeing what's exactly on at that time or at some you know, previous <coughs> time frame? Um, we're pretty close to up to date on that. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty synchronous there between what's being used and what you're seeing in the dashboard. So what kind of outgoing ports are required for this to work? Is it like just port, port 443 four, three outbound is all you need on the firewall to, to work with this. Okay. Are you going to talk about durability or anything in the, the future? Yeah, I was looking that way. Yeah, Jeff's going to talk about that in terms of data protection and stuff. We're going to go through like what the actual appliance is from a drive configuration and that kind of stuff? Yes. Okay. 